five quick ways to improve your trust as a school leader. So before we jump in, always remember that trust is earned and it comes from your hard work. So when you start this work of improving the trust amongst your staff, here are five ways to help you do so. So number one is consistency. And the way that your consistency shows up is through the way that you spend your time and the level of predictability that people are able to have as it relates to your actions. So how much time are you putting in with them and how predictable are your actions? Meaning, do they know that they're gonna get an email every Monday at 7.30 in the morning that details the whole week? Do they know that you are going to show up consistently and they'll see you every day and you'll be available if they have questions? That's the first step, consistency. Secondly, you wanna make sure that you are modeling the behavior you want. Just like Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. If you want them to trust you, you have to show that you are trustworthy. So the way that you show you're trustworthy is by making sure that you're honest and you're transparent and you're not like talking negatively about staff behind their backs because if you will speak badly about a staff member to them, then they may rightfully so think that you're gonna speak badly about them to someone else. And that definitely hurts the process of developing the trust, okay? Third is you wanna always exhibit empathy. So you wanna make sure that you are actively listening to the needs of your staff, that you are seeking to feel and understand what they need from you. So if someone is having issues with, say, dropping their child off in the morning and that's why they're coming in late to work, are they comfortable enough to speak to you? Are you seeking to understand what they really need? Or are you thinking about process over people? So number three, exhibit empathy. So always people over process. Number four is make sure you have measures that build in accountability. So is there a way for people to share feedback? Is there a way for people to say how they feel? And then are you actually reading it, valuing it, addressing it, and then implementing suggestions that make sense for the school? Also, the same way that you're celebrating your successes, are you openly talking to them about your mistakes. The more openly you speak to them about your mistakes, the more open they are going to be with you in terms of letting you know what their weaknesses are, what they feel like they need help with, etc. Okay, they'll be more comfortable taking risks, understanding that there is a chance they might fail if and when they have a leader who also admits his or her mistakes. And number five, might even be the most important, but trust is cyclical. It's all about reciprocity. It's like a big circle. So in order for staff to trust you, you have to show that you trust them. So as a school leader, the way that you show that you trust your staff is by delegating duties to them, allowing them to own initiatives. You give them the success criteria so they know exactly what you're expecting to see. And then provide them with the resources or materials or whatever support that they need to really get it done and get it done well, and then trust them to get it done. And then yes, if you have to give feedback, give feedback so that it continues to get better. But if you are a principal that is saying, I wear all the hats and I'm doing all the things, yes, it makes you look great, but it translates to your staff that you don't trust them enough to help you and that undermines your work of developing trust. So again, consistency, model the behavior, exhibit empathy, build in accountability, and remember that trust is cyclical. That's it, Dr. Mel signing out. I believe in you and I believe in your school. Have a great day.